Mundo. Game Watch. Game Watch. There is probably no one of the 80s who hasn't ever heard of Game & Watch. Tens of millions of units sold worldwide. There is a perfect game for everyone, from the first discrete small screen models, to double screen fancy color ones, and even games with a transparent screen. Featuring lots of characters and game scenes like the charismatic Mr. Game & Watch, Mickey Mouse and other stars like Mario Bros, Donkey Kong, Popeye, Snoopy. There was a new type of entertainment for adults, teens and children all over the world. But how did gaming electronic devices become a trend so much fast? And who is that person that made this become reality? His name is Gunpei Yokoi. Born on 10th of September of 1941, he was a handyman child, manufacturing toys for his friends and schoolmates using all domestic tools. His inventions were so great that a specialized magazine dedicated some pages to his creations. And having finished his studies in electronics with some difficulties, has been refused a number of times until a company called Nintendo, a small company producing card games that time, decided to give him a chance. He was hired as a factory maintenance technician. As the company was very small that time, it was very easy for him to do his work. And usually, having done all his work in the morning, he had plenty of time to create his toys using waste of paper. Till one morning when President Hiroshi Yamauchi entered his room and discovered what he was really doing during his work hours. Gunpei was already preparing himself for the worst, but the president only asked him how the toy worked. Against all his expectations, he was interested enough to offer him to improve the toy with the scope of selling it. It was commercialized in 1966 and sold over 1 million copies. Of course, I'm talking about Alter Hand, a mechanic hand designed to grab distant objects. After its success, he got a promotion. This way, Nintendo could extend their business beyond the card games production. Thanks to his inventions, the market got such toys as Love Tester, Computer Mahjong, Ultra Machine, Alter Scope. Eli Konga Light Telephone And later Game & Watch, Game Boy and Virtual Boy He was also development supervisor of some popular console games Gumpy Yokoi played an important role in development of the new entertainment industry, gaming One day in 1977, Gumpy was coming back home from his business trip to Tokyo with Shinkansen train. And a simple episode took his attention. There were men hitting buttons on their calculators, as it seemed just to kill time. And Gumpy got a brilliant idea. There should be another way to allow adults kill their time in discreet manner during their trip. And he didn't even think about something that was similar to a calculator or a gaming console or electronic device in general. He told the president about it. Yamauchi discussed the idea with the Sharp CEO. The Sharp Corporation was famous for producing the first LCD screens and calculators. They became very enthusiastic about the idea and decided to collaborate with Nintendo. The invention of Gumpy was not only an innovative device, it was also designed in a way to respect social and behavior rules. An adult wanted to play games as any child would, just were under pressure of society, where it would be odd and embarrassing for an adult to get a big electronic game out of his pocket in a train full of people, as if he was a child and start playing. Because of that, Gumpy decided to make the game small enough to hide in the palm of your hand. After some trials, the team decided that a display or a size 4x3 would be perfect fit. The concept of gaming watch was a great idea because electronic watches of that time had a price of thousands of yen. Meanwhile, gaming watch was about 6000 yen. But it was not only a watch, but also a game. 
Ball was the first game on watch and also the first LCD game. The character must juggle two balls moving his arms. Although at the beginning the objects move slowly, they gradually increase speed putting a strain on the reflexes and the sense of rhyme of the player. It was a new concept developed by the Game Watch team and allowed both beginners and advanced players to enjoy the game, progressing more and more over time. One particular thing about this Game Watch is that you are given only one attempt, after which the game ends and you have to start from scratch. At the same time it was easier compared to other titles. The main principle while developing a new title was to make everything clear and to make anyone start playing immediately without even having to read the manual. As an example we can take the development of the octopus game. Initially they wanted to make you play as the fish and to escape the octopus. But it didn't seem so logical. Why the fish had to swim so close to octopus to be caught? So they decided to make the main character a human. In this case it was perfectly logical. The diver wanted to get the treasure, so that's why he wanted to risk his life. Everyone in the team could suggest an idea for a new title. But often there was something missing to make it become the final game. And Gompi was able to find the key element that made a difference. After the first two Game & Watch characters completely designed by Gumpy, the world saw new characters. Now known with the name of Mr. Game & Watch. They were designed by Makoto Kano, whose talent was noticed by Kumpi Yukoi and who was trusted the artistic direction of the majority of characters. Nowadays, Mr. Game & Watch makes his character debut in Super Smash Bros. Smiley as the final unlockable character. He is also present in this year's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mr. Game & Watch is unique in that his movements are individual frames like with a Game & Watch game. All Mr. Game Watch moves reference different Game Watch units. He can toss food from a frying pan like on Chef. His down smash is the hammers from Vermin. He can fly with the parachute. Swing a hammer like a judge. Or transform himself in octopus. Although the initial idea was making the Game Watch discreet and designed for adults. It hasn't got so much success among them. Instead, millions of children were obsessed with the game. So the team didn't have to be limited to produce devices with strict and elegant design anymore. Initially there were two series of Game & Watch, Silver and Gold. They included such titles as Ball, Fire and Manhole. In total there were five games in Silver series and three in the Gold. Later, Yamauchi ordered to produce Game & Watches with large screens. The series were called Widescreen and New Widescreen. They are almost the same, but more colorful and costed less. The screen was 1.7 times bigger, and having more space available, it also allowed to invent such titles as Parachute, Octopus, Super Mario Bros. Donkey Kong Jr. Chef. Mario's Cement Factory. Balloon Fight. And the first external licenses like Mickey Mouse. There were 18 games in these two series. The next big step in development was creating a game with double screen. Having received such a task, Gompi wanted to invent something that was not just the same idea but with two screens for more space. He wanted to make a game that justified the usage of two screens. And the first result was the game Oil Panic. There was a perfect sense of having a double screen. You had to control both screens at the same time. While you had to avoid the oil drop on the floor using a container. You have to empty the container by throwing the gas down from the window. But only when there is the guy receiving it, otherwise the gas will spill on the people below. The next famous double screen model was Donkey Kong. In that time the game was very popular in game rooms in the USA and Japan. It was also supervised by Gumpy, and so he decided to use the success of the game and make it portable so everyone could play it on the go. During the Donkey Kong development period, another important technology was invented. We are talking about D-pad. Initially, Donkey Kong Game & Watch was supposed to use a small classic joystick, like an arcade machine. 
But they were disadvantages, like it prevented the console to be closed. And it was also easy to damage. There had been some attempts to implement it, but it was not worth it. And then Gumpy got an idea to put separate directional buttons close to each other in a way they could be pressed with a thumb without even looking which button you are pressing. You could simply feel it because of the construction of the pad. It was a simple but very important idea that not only permitted to innovate the Game Watch series, but also the whole gaming industry creating a standard for game pads for years to come. There are 15 titles, including the already mentioned Oil Panic and Donkey Kong, Zelda, Rain Shower, Lifeboat, Greenhouse. The next two Game and Watch series are Color Screen or Tabletop and Panorama Screen. Combining the excellent LCD-based gameplay that shines throughout the entire series with full-color images, these were innovative as well as fun to play. Even though the series had a bright color screen, it consumed very little energy. It used a combination of regular black liquid crystals with sunlight projected through a mirror to create the images. It was able to run for 3 years on 2C batteries without even being switched off. The tabletop series offers remakes for 4 previous titles with some modifications in gameplay. Meanwhile, the panorama screen offers the same titles except Mario's Simon Factory, adding 2 new titles, and one of them in 2 versions. The next series is Supercolor, consisted of two games, both released in February 84. Speedball Sparky and Crab Grab. The microwave system games released between July 84 and November 84 were another example of innovative design. They had two gamepads, thus allowing two players to play together. And also the screen was super wide, it was a new thing for that time. There were three titles in this series. Boxing. Donkey Kong 3 and Donkey Kong Hockey. The crystal screen was the last major innovation of the Game & Watch series featuring a transparent clear screen. Produced between June and November 86 and never published in Japan, there were three. Climber, Super Mario Bros. and Balloon Fight. Anyway, the majority of Game & Watches created after like 1983-84 have not been released in Japan. The interest in Game & Watch dropped considerably because of the Famicom system release in July 83 in Japan. Known as NES, Nintendo Entertainment System and the rest of the world, released from 2 to 4 years later. That's why Game & Watches maintained their popularity outside the country for a few more years. As for any successful product, it was very difficult to avoid competition. There were different devices on the market that tried to copy the design, the game idea or both. But the reaction of Gumpy Yokoi was completely different from the one you'd expect. That's what he said. When I saw the first copies, I felt proud. To be copied meant that my game had a potential to be appreciated by all children of the planet. And then I'm the best to be copied. So he just analyzed the competition. And it was an inspiration for him to create something different and not yet existent. The superiority of their games consists in the fact that they were designed in detail. The team treated every minimal detail carefully. From the idea and user experience, animations, game design, humor, movements, controls, to the final presentation and package. All the titles had something very original and special compared to the competition, that usually copied and tried to make games with different graphics, but that had always the same idea. Gumpy Yokoi contributed greatly to the gaming industry, and the invention of Game Watch played a very important role in development of LCD screen technology. When the Game Watch was invented, Nintendo was in a very difficult financial situation because of debts of about 8 billion yen. In only 2 years, Nintendo managed to pay the debt off and to earn much more. All the money received from selling 43 million units around the world were reinvested in the new Famicom game console. 
That was the time Nintendo reinvented itself to become the legendary company we all know and love nowadays.